Jimmy and joins me now to talk about it really for the first time actually and yes. and it was it was in March time wasn't it and you yes. just felt the need to have this public cry for help almost. Um, I feel like with mental health um, people with mental health give themselves so many places to hide mm. and I just wanted to have this last place exposed so I had nowhere else to hide and that was the only reason for doing that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really of my right mind when I did it but I just got it out of the way. And I mean, you've described before that you can you can feel absolutely fine, and you don't necessarily link it to depression or anything oh. else. You say that you feel you go from zero to one hundred mm. in moments where suddenly you are overcome with these suicidal thoughts. Yes, and it just all oh, the past just comes and gets you when you don't realise it's going to come. It just catches up. Uh huh. And and when you say when you say past, I mean we, we, we do obviously we're linking this to you had a a, a, a tough. Mm. upbringing really you had a very abusive father yes. you, you saw some awful things at home with with abuse towards your mom and indeed yes. your, your brother who who sadly took his own life because yes. it was too much for him mm. um, so where are you at now do you mean how, how do you feel have you processed all of the, the the awful stuff that did happen and here we are in this new chapter of your life is that how you see it I feel like I'm only just starting to accept that I have to process it because you go through fronting it and just fronting a smile, pretending and just continuing as though nothing has happened. So I think now I'm just trying to channel the energy out of my body rather than circulating it within myself. Yeah, I mean, you off the back of, of the tweets and there, you got a, a huge response from lots of people wishing you well and wanting to help. And off the back of that, you almost felt the need to, to, to apologize, to say, look, I, yes. I am OK. <laughs> it was just it was a moment I was yes. having. But in, in the apology, you wrote about having um, complete foundations that are crumbling bricks. Yes. So you kind of feel like the foundation isn't strong. Um, yes. And it is that process of trying Mm. to make that strong, isn't it? It's because I was born into abuse, so I don't have anything to go back to, because usually when you are suffering with something, you can go back to a time when you were feeling OK. Mm. Whereas for me, I was born into abuse. My father used to beat me and my mother. The last time you were on Lorraine, you talked about wanting to write a book of, of poems. Yes. And in fact, <laughs> off the back of this, this pressure that you feel, mm -hmm. It's a form of therapy in a strange way, Definitely. isn't it? it? And, and it's now come to, to fruition. Channel the, all that energy into something that you can read back and it makes sense to you finally and to finish it off with hope. One is dedicated to your mum and yes. indeed Nicole Scherzinger. Yes. <laughs> who has become a massive part of your life since X Factor. Definitely. She's probably the person I stay closest with from the show. She's been my big sister. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and it's entitled Message for a Friend. And I, yes. I wonder, does she, does she know that yet? She doesn't know that it's in the book. No. Really? I wrote it for one of her birthdays and I changed the title and put it oh, in the book. Oh, goodness, how lovely. Although you say that and she's described you as her guardian angel in several <laughs> interviews, so you obviously have a very close relationship. Yes, we share scripture, we talk all the time. She always supports me and especially in March, she reached out and we met up. Mm-hmm, I made up. So w what's sort of next for you now then? Do you, mean, you do feel like you're on the road to some sort of a recovery and you talk about maybe spending a bit of time away from the UK, in fact. Yes, yeah, so what I want to make my third album. I won't have a label for it, so I'm trying to be, do everything a lot more independently. The book I did by myself, so I put it all together myself. The cover and everything I try to put together myself. So I'm just trying to learn about the industry a bit more, because mm -hmm. obviously off the back of the X Factor, things are done for you. You're part of a big label, Sony. So I'm just trying to learn. Yeah. It's time to learn. Of course it is. <laughs> do do people just constantly talk X Factor to you still? Are you still yes. <laughs> the, the X Factor guy? <laughs> but I, I understand because it was a good year. I mean, James Arthur, I'm proud of him. He's doing very well now. You're very good friends. <laughs> and as Rylan well. as well. Yes. Of and Lucy Sprague and Ella. There's so many from my year, so it's good to Good to come back from that year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you are thinking about spending about a bit of time in New York, which, which yes. <laughs> can be great. Well, how does your mum feel about that? Um, she obviously wants to spend time with me, but I need. I think it's a good place for my sound, my music, and I have people there that can guide me and help build my sound in America. Okay. Start afresh. Yeah, no, no, of course, so of no course. No one knows that I'm from X Factor out there. <laughs> yeah, that's true, which is nice. It's a nice, mm. fresh beginning. It'd be nice Matt. to build from the ground up. Of course it is. Well, no, we, we say the book, it's named, uh, the, uh, the album has the same <laughs> title. I'm going to let you say it properly as opposed to me <laughs> trying to mess it up. So it's Unfathomable. Phantasmagoria. But it follows on nicely from the album, I think. Okay. I, wanted, I wanted it to tie back in because it's still the same journey. Yeah. So I wanted it to be a part of the same journey. Okay. And so <laughs> does this journey take you on a different side now? Was this, is this where you're going to... The book. I feel, well, I feel like it's a lot more personal and honest. You can't really do that in music because you have to stick to structures and it only goes so far. So now I feel like I'm giving a more, less physical, more mental mm -hmm. honesty. Yeah, well, good for you, Jimmy. I'm so glad that you feel like you're 
you're doing better right. and, and being honest <laughs> to be fair being honest yes. when you don't feel good and that's that is the key just learning to, to cope with it yeah. day by day yeah of not course. telling people that you know you can get better mm -hmm. <laughs> just like that just coping with it yeah and finding things to stay busy with and my book is <laughs> the thing at the moment i'm busy with it's a big part of it well thank you so much for coming in <laughs> thank Jane. you for it's having lovely me on. to talk to you thank <laughs> you